I bring warm greetings in the precious name of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's Dr. Ryan here again with our fifth overview video in this series. I hope you and your family are well. We're going to be talking about nail changes in systemic disease. All right, here's our clinical case for today. A 29-year-old man presents to your clinic with worsening fatigue. Mm -hmm. He has no significant past medical history and... Um, he works in the gym, participates in fitness competitions, and follows a very strict vegetarian diet. Hmm. Clinically, he has subconstantial pallor and a very important sign called cholinicia. You check his routine labs, which are normal except for his full blood count, which shows hemoglobin of 10.2 gram per liter, a mean cell volume of 74 femtoliters, so it's a microcytic anemia, with a serum iron of 29 microgram per liter, a serum ferritin of 14 microgram per liter, a TIBC, which stands for total iron binding capacity of 410 microgram per deciliter, and a whopping 10% saturation. His full blood count was normal three years ago when it was last checked. So which of the following would be the best treatment for this patient? Is it desferioxamine? That's option A, option B, folic acid supplementation, option C, iron supplementation, option D, treatment of the underlying inflammatory disease, or is it E, vitamin B12 deficiency? Hmm. So everybody, let's hope to nail the following points. <laughs> let's take note that normal nail growth is about 0.1 millimeters per day. Not much at all. And the fingernails actually grow quicker than your toenails. So if ever you wonder, why are my fingernails growing so fast in comparison to my toenails? That is normal physiology. And the nail plate grows continuously and slowly at the rate of about one centimeter every three months. Hence, renewal of an entire fingernail takes about three to six months and toenails uh, that grow slowly may even take up to a year. Now, rapid growth of the nail plate, as you know, occurs in our beloved psoriasis. And nail growth is actually arrested by acute illness and ischemia and manifests as bow's lines. And we'll talk about them. So, as in the case, what is koilonychia? Well, it is basically characterized by a concavity or a spoon-shaped nail. The mechanism is largely unknown, probably postulated to be due to slow grade of growth of the nail plate. Here we can see the typical spooning of the nails and you can see it as well okay what are the causes of cholinoikia i'm glad you asked well iron deficiency anemia is by and large the commonest cause or it can also happen in trauma especially among grass mechanics and tire fitters it happens in thyrotoxicosis and fungal infection and reynolds disease what are the different stages of cholinoikia well stage there's three stages Stage one is dryness, brittleness, and ridging. Dry, it's like some of my jokes, you know, <laughs> causing xerostomia there. <laughs> stage two is flattening and thinning. And stage three is when you actually have the manifestation of the spooning or the concavity coming through. And the patient who presents with cholinoikia clinically, what else would you like to inquire about? Well, a history of dysphagia. And you want to examine that tongue for glossitis. And remember that if you have these particular features, cholinoikia, plus dysphagia and glossitis, you've got to think about our beloved plumber Vinson syndrome. In which, okay, what is plumber Vinson syndrome? Hmm. So we said this combination of iron deficiency anemia with dysphagia. And why do we have a dysphagia? Because you've got a post-cricoid web which is secondary to epithelial degeneration and often happens with glossitis. And you have uh, bleeding from this long-term manifesting as a microcytic anemia. All right, something different now. What is leukonychia? Leuko meaning white. What causes leukonychia? Well, leukonychia means literally white nail. It may be diffuse, punctate, linear, or striate which is white with transverse flex, which is actually a common finding here. We can see some very white nails. And this person didn't paint their nails white. That's normal nail that looks white. It may be a normal finding. The usual culprits behind this is renal. Uh, we, we partition them into categories. So renal in the way of nephrotic syndrome and chronic renal failure. And we know the situation in nephrotic syndrome is one of hypoalbuminemia, together with a lot of other features. Uh, hepatic etiologies like chronic liver disease and cirrhosis malnutrition in the way of malabsorption and other rare ones like lymphoma and fungal infection. A very importantly, striate leukonychia may be a normal finding due to minor trauma. Now, what does leukonychia indicate and what's the underlying mechanism? Well, 
Nukunokia often indicates a situation where your albumin is low in the serum, so a hypoalbuminemia. And the mechanism, just like cholinikia, is largely unknown, but is postulated to be due to compression of capillary flow by this extracellular fluid. The presence of leukonychia indicates disease of the liver, kidney, or GIT, like we mentioned. Okay, what about nail fold infarct? Here we have some beautiful uh, nail fold infarcts. Uh, it's usually vasculitis, vasculitis, vasculitis due to any cause. The common culprits being systemic lupus erythematosus, dermatomyositis, systemic sclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis, and pen. Pucks and pens. No, not really pen. It's polyarthritis nodosa. Okay. Now these are splinter hemorrhages, right? They are often uh, vertical, if you like, right? And the most common cause is trauma, but it's also a common feature of systemic bacterial endocarditis, septicemia, collagen, vascular disease, especially vasculitis, with the usual culprits that we mentioned before, right? Uh, systemic lupus erythematosus, rheumatoid arthritis, polydritis nodosa. Others include hematological malignancy, severe anemia, and psoriasis. What are the causes of our beloved half and half nails? So here we can see that the proximal half is white, while the distal part is red or brown. Half and half nails causes that chronic kidney disease, cirrhosis of the liver can also be a normal variant. What about nail for telangiectasy? Uh, my apologies, not very really well demonstrated here, but causes of this are, you know, systemic lupus erythematosus, systemic sclerosis, dermatomyositis, mixed connective tissue disease, and Reynolds phenomenon. Both lines we alluded to before, which are non pigmented, it's non pigmented transverse line or it's a groove in the nail due to transient arrest of nail growth it appears at the same time on all nails a few weeks after an acute illness and the common culprits for this manifestation are chronic illness in the way of infection malignancy or collagen disease prolonged fever pneumonia coronary artery disease and others include cachexia malnutrition psychiatric disease and use of our beloved cytotoxic drugs me not you me causes of me is like a single transverse white band in the nail here very well depicted and causes of the chronic arsenic poisoning can happen in chronic kidney disease and also after chemotherapy and severe illness yellow nails hmm look at this not very nice huh? it's found in what we term yellow nail syndrome which is an inherited disease in which the nails are thick yellow or pigmented with separation of the distal part of the nail bed because of hypoplasia of the lymphatic system and it's often associated with lymphedema of the legs bronchiectasis right, which is an example of a suppurative lung disease and pleural effusions what about nail pitting where there's depression in the nail right you want to give that nail some antidepressants now <laughs> we're talking about depressions from the actual surface of the nail and here we can see pitting mixed with onycholysis here we see pitting in the toe pitting in the fingers common culprits are psoriasis alopecia areata, atopic eczema, which uh, when it involves a proximal nail bed, and petriasis rosacea. All right, onycholysis, right? Here we have a representation of onycholysis, the first to separation of the distal nail plate from the nail bed so that the free edge looks whitish and causes here once again psoriasis. And when it happens in the setting of thyrotoxicosis, we call this a plumber sign, right? Nothing wrong with your pipes, uh, and your water, but it's called plumber sign. It can be an idiopathic um, phenomenon occasionally due to drugs, and the common culprits among the drugs is tetracycline and sorlin, uh, porphyria. It can be due to trauma or a faulty manicure. So, watch who you go to for your manicure, please. Terry's nail uh, looks remarkably similar to half and half nails, right? Here, the proximal part, however, is white or pink, and the nail tip is red or brown. And it's due to a decrease in vascularity and an increase in connective tissue within the actual nail bed. And causes include old age, so it's present normally among the elderly, cirrhosis of the liver, congestive heart failure, don't forget chronic kidney disease, hyperthyroidism, and of course malnutrition. So coming back to our clinical case, guys, we had a young male, all right, who's a vegetarian, who participates in gym, he presents with clinical stigmata of anemia with pana and cholinokia and his bloods indicate that he has a microcytic anemia with a low serum iron a low serum ferritin and a low percentage saturation all right so it's evident that he of course has iron deficiency and so how would you want to address his problem you give him some iron iron supplementation so just a little on this 
The patient has iron deficiency anemia, as we said, evidenced by microcytic anemia combined with iron studies that show those particular parameters. We know that vegetarians are at an additional disadvantage because certain foodstuffs that include phytates and phosphates reduce iron absorption by up to a whopping 50%. Right? Desferioxamine, of course, is an iron chelator, which we use in hemochromatosis, actually. And if you use it here, that's going to simply worsen the anemia. So this is some encouragement from scripture for everybody. Today we're talking about servanthood and our ultimate example of servanthood is looking at the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Matthew chapter 20 verses 26 to 28, Jesus says, whoever wants to be great among you, right? Whoever wants to be great among you um, must first be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must first be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, he didn't come to be served, but to serve and to serve us and others and give his life as a ransom for many. Hallelujah. The book of chapter, uh, sorry, the book of First Peter chapter 4 verse 10 says, Each one should use whatever gift he has received to do what? To serve others uh, and be faithfully at administering God's grace in its various forms. God bless you, everybody. Here are my references. I hope we nailed today's presentation on nail changes and systemic disease. I'll catch you again soon with another helpful video in uh, algorithms in internal medicine and mnemonics. God bless you.